Hello everyone, welcome back to Mind Pump. In the first half of this episode, we talk about how using isometrics can improve the mind to muscle connection, increase strength, and even pack on muscle. After that, we had some fun conversations about a variety of other topics, so you'll want to stick around for that. In the second half of the show, we coach four live callers on questions such as, what will happen to my body if I take a week off of working out and don't hit my protein targets? Will I wither away? One of my pecs is smaller than the other. How can I balance them out? What's the best type of cardio to build muscle? All right, everyone, enjoy the show. Isometrics are a game changer. It's too bad most people don't do them. They build tremendous strength and muscle, and they don't cause a lot of damage. So they're really easy to add to your workout to accelerate your gains. Uh, totally take advantage of them. Uh, I've never heard of isometrics. <laughs> yeah, Justin, mm -hmm. tell me all about it. I wish somebody told me about that. <laughs> you know what? I feel like it's getting popular right now. It's starting to. Right. It's starting to. Um, that's Justin. Set you. I think Justin did it. Yeah. <laughs> He's I tried really about. hard, yeah, to get it into you know the public's. Uh, knowledge. It's got to be one of the, it's still, even though it's getting more popular, it's one of the most uh, underutilized techniques. Why do you think that is? You know, in fitness, things tend to fall in at a favor. It's weird, right? Hard, I, hard to punish yourself it, it, in isometrics. That's why. Yeah, maybe. That's what I It doesn't think. look cool on video. Yes, yeah, it doesn't look cool. <laughs> it's, it's hard. It's just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It doesn't feel like you're doing much, you know, yeah. except for making it yeah. tough and doesn't struggling. Make, yeah. It doesn't make for good Instagram posts. No. Uh, yeah. No. And I think, I think all the grimace, none of the sexy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah and I think it's, I think it's hard to punish yourself. I think it's one of those things where uh, exercises turn into that, you know, beat yourself up and who can, who can withstand the most. I don't think that, uh, that isometrics well, do a good job. Here's some easy ways that somebody could apply isometrics if you're you're new to them is just take a lift and pause it for five to ten seconds in a in a portion of the rep. That's all. That's that's one way to use to one way to it's use isometrics. Yeah. That's actually one of my favorite ways to use it. Or oh, I, should I say would that or like squeezing at the end of a rep. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. Wh whatever exercise you're doing. So like a shortened mm -hmm. portion, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I do like the hold. Um, I do it typically in the stretch position because that's where I'm the weakest. I think like most people. Uh, but I, you know, I did them today. I did some squats, held the bottom for eight to ten seconds. And it's just, you could feel it. It really feels good. And when I when I use them consistently, I see really good strength gains. But more than that, it's really protective. That's what I noticed. It's really protective on my joints because when you're holding a position, you're really focused on maintaining good technique position, making sure everything's in the groove. So then what happens is you strengthen that good position. You actually make it a stronger position for yourself so that when you're going heavy or hard or fatiguing, your body will revert to this position you're strong in. So it makes things a lot safer. Well, and I noticed too, if I've been um, working with the barbell quite a, quite a bit and I want to transition and do more unilateral stuff or, you know, especially anything in a split stance, like the first thing I do is focus on isometric. So I'll slow down and do what you're talking about in terms yeah. of like getting to the bottom portion and hold it because just that balance and that transfer, um, it takes a while to, to react properly to that. So to, you know, start it off and like really kind of connect to, to that balance and, and get that all situated isometrics are perfect for that now oh. as a as a trainer i felt like i used this a lot with clients but i didn't use it with myself as same as, you know it was like a such a great tool if you're a trainer for like advanced age clients or someone who's really deconditioned you know before you take a risk and like adding more load when they're still learning the mechanics down like what a great way to progressively overload their body without just making it harder with more weight. You know, it's funny reps. too. I'm, I'm wondering if this was true for you too, Adam. I didn't necessarily, because I did use them with clients a lot. I didn't necessarily know that I was doing isometrics. Really, it was a way to get their form better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I'd have them pause yeah. just to perfect, you know, oh wait, move your knee this way, hold this position. This is what good technique feels like. So it wasn't like I used them like I do now intentionally with understanding the real value of isometrics. It's really about correcting form. But I mean, I've said this, I mean, how many times have we said this? It, <coughs> Trainers are always better with their clients than they are with themselves. It's way more objective, right? It's like, I wish I could, if I went back, I wish I just took my own advice. So I would have gotten so, so much further. Well, well, there's a lot of things I think as trainers you think that are, are so basic and fundamental and you're beyond that. Mm -hmm. Such a such a terrible trap. It man. is, but it's true though, right? It's like isometrics. Come on, that's like yeah, <laughs> for my old clients. Yeah, yeah. so I'm stupid. So I'm so much more advanced than that. So stupid. <laughs> Do you guys have any favorite isometric um, like holds or positions or exercises or ways to use them? 
Well, like you're talking about a pause squat, like I think for me, it's it's all those little micro adjustments as you're like trying to brace and squeeze and hold, uh, not just trying to light everything up and and get the the muscle response. It's mainly like, okay, where where do I feel any instability? Where do I feel like I need to get stronger in being able to hold and sustain this position? A lot of times, you know, it surprises you. Like, uh, you know, sometimes too, like my grip might be an issue that I'm not uh, addressing or, you know, a slight shift, a slight asymmetrical shift that I have to correct yeah. and adjust. So I just like like compound lifts like that to, to slow it way down and then just feel my, what, how my body is, is reacting. Oh, yeah. I have, I have three favorites that come to mind. Um, and they're probably not what you guys would think. Uh, top of a seated calf raise, uh, top of a, the, the, a shoulder press and then a seated row. And I just oh, think those are all good actually. And the like reason, the reason why I think I like those so much. Okay. The seated row is obviously, uh, um, countering what most people struggle with is the the forward shoulders, yeah, that's right? A good call. So, and and learning to really connect to those back muscles, I think that's just I think it's so important. And you can intensify the shit out of that. That's right. That position, yes. And I and I just think that it 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 adds so much value. It also helps reinforce the ability to do that like naturally. And and it, that's what's wrong with a lot of people's postures mm-hmm. is they don't pull the shoulder blades back. Uh, the full extension in the shoulder press. I think that's, we just, we don't fully extend our arms that much. So to create this you know, isometric hold at the top of a, of a shoulder press, I think it just kind of wakes up all the entire shoulder like that. It gets me comfortable with extending my arms um, above my head. And then the calf one was one that came for me later. And I want to give the credit to, I think it was Ben Pakolsky, who I heard talk about, um, you know, weak muscle groups that you have a hard time developing and that many times it is the connection at the uh, the the, the shortened the position. shortened position of a of a muscle. Totally. And so, uh, I mean, what went off for me when he said that was okay. Calves have always been a real challenge for me. And so, have I ever trained in this position? I actually, to this day, the, you know, I'm very inconsistent with training my calves. I'm very consistent with isometric calf holds in the shower. I've like, <laughs> I'm serious. And I, and I, and I attribute the, that to, uh, the, the, uh, my calves being you less small, really high. I mean, uh, I like, because the, the tiles on my, on my shower, I, I actually spread, spread my toes and I do the, what's the one where you pretend like you're you're picking up like a ball with oh, your short foot. Uh, short, short foot, foot yeah. yeah. I do short foot in there, and then hard. I do. Uh, it is, and it, and I guess I, I think it's the like the floor is like kind of soapy and stuff like that, so it allows me to kind of like spread and grip. So I do that, and I do isometric soapy holds. Adam on his toes. In the <laughs> I do. It's, <laughs> it's a, a great, such a great. Yeah. It's <laughs> and I well okay. So I applied it first to obviously doing tight. doing seated calf raises and standing calf raises, and I felt like I noticed a a a big difference when I was incorporating that into my calf training, and so it's been an easy thing that I can, I mean, we always talk about this, right? With things that are least resisting or ways to incorporate little habits into our life. That, yeah. Cause you can do them so frequently. That's right. It's yeah. so I shower twice a day, every day. If I just make a habit of doing this isometric hold, I feel like I've maintained some size on my calves that normally I would not, had I not been doing that. It's an easy thing for me. So yeah, those are my so, three. You know, okay. So, um, what's interesting like about this. the calf raise one, the seated one, especially is that it's a weird position. Most of us don't ever get to the top of. And what you'll find, because I do that too, what you what I found was is that I feel like I'm at the top of the movement, but as I practice, I can actually get further and further yes. up. Yes. So then you know, like, oh, I'm developing a new connection. Um, so I share one with you, the, the top of the shoulder press. I love that because I hold a barbell at the top, pack my shoulders, really fully extend my arms. I get real good carry over there. The bottom of a squat, my favorite. Get to the bottom, make sure I'm in good position, stay real tight, squeeze the upper back. That's one of my favorites. And then uh, bench press at the bottom. Like literally just touching my chest, but the bar is basically supported by my body. I really like the way those feel and how they contribute to the rest of my, my well, training. Well, one, too, I would add, and I used to do this with my clients a lot that had a hard time activating their chest was, um, you know, with the cable machine and just oh. going through a fly and like just a single arm fly mm. and really focusing on holding that yep. without rotating. So that that being one factor is the anti-rotational aspect of that. Uh, but then also, too, that tension that's pulling them that they're resisting. I, yeah. One of my favorite exercises to do is an, an alternating fly with an isometric hold. So exactly Exactly what you're saying in a split stance mm-hmm. in in a, in a contracted position and then i open up and the the right arm is keeping the isometric yep. hold yep. and then i come over and then i alternate the other side and then it gets a whole i love that yeah exercise. you gotta go light 
Yeah. yeah. You gotta go lie I, down. I love, I love yeah, that really exercise. Good. Oh boy, the Black Friday sale. We do this once a year. Check this out. Every single MAPS fitness product, every workout program, every single one, 60% off. That's crazy. We never do this. Once a year, this sale ends on the 27th. Now to celebrate, I'm going to give one of you free access to the super bundle. This super bundle contains MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, MAPS Prime, and more. I think there's more programs. It's our biggest bundle. One of you will win it for free, but you got to do this. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. Do all those things. And if we declare you the winner, we will let you know in the comment section. And boom, you'll win. Now, everybody else, 60% off. And you're not limited to how many programs you can get. So if you've been waiting, now's the time to act. Go to uh, mapsfitnessproducts.com. Use the code Black Friday for the 60% off discount. Uh, again, this ends on the 27th. This is the Black Friday sale. All right, here comes the show. Anyway, so uh, I got into a, I got into one of those uh, conversations. You ever get a conversation with your wife where she just, you're like, ah, Trey, <laughs> I said the wrong thing. You just want to moonwalk your way out? Yeah, dude. So we're sitting yeah. on the couch and yeah, I mean, I, my wife is just, she's she's a stunning woman. She's gorgeous. And she knows I I think that I feel that way here about comes her. Here anyway, shit sandwich. <laughs> bro. Yeah, here it comes, bro. <laughs> Set the table, bro. dude. Come on. So we're sitting there on the couch, right? Now she's like, she's like, it's nine months pregnant, like due date is around the corner. Super uncomfortable, I feel for her, right? So anybody who's ever been pregnant, she's just, or if, you're, if you've had a wife or, or partner that's pregnant, you see it, it's just, you're super uncomfortable. So she's hurting. She can't lay down a particular way. She's kind of feeling kind of crappy. And she makes a comment about how she looks. She's like, oh, I'm so big right now, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you're like, I, th I think you're stunning. I think you're so, you know, so beautiful or whatever. And she goes, yeah, but am I objectively attractive? And I said, honey, to me, you're gorgeous. That was the mistake. Uh, I said, to me. Oh, because oh, you said to <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, dude. I said, honey, to me. It's a trap. Yeah, honey, to me, you're yeah, gorgeous. Just to me. Everybody right. else thinks I'm ugly. Right. I'm oh, running outside, dude. So she, and she's hella quiet, right? She's hella quiet. And we're watching TV. I'm like, and I started realizing, like, oh, fuck. I said the wrong I said the wrong thing. She took it the wrong way. So I'm like, babe, what are you? And she's like, but not objectively. I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. <laughs> I said, the, and then I just dug a hole, right? I just kept digging. Yeah, yeah. I said, honey, mm. one day you're going to be 80 years old and I'm always going to find you attractive. She's like, oh, so it's like that right now? Is that weird? I'm like, all right. We're for, just going to. Yeah, forget We're it. just going to stop the conversation. <laughs> just just right? quit while you're ahead. <laughs> I'm just like changing the channel. Oh, trying to put it on something to you know, oh, watch man. or whatever. Oh. I hate those conversations. But, you know, what, is, what is everybody doing? for? We're coming up on in the holidays and stuff like that. What's everybody doing for Thanksgiving and everything like that? What's, the, what's everyone's plan? Well, plans? we're probably not going anywhere. Because mm. Yeah. Well, we'll so have, that's yeah, what I mean. Yeah. So are you hunkering down and no yeah. family too? Like, yeah, like, probably Get your own not. turkey in the oven. Yeah. So will it just be your, your immediate family? Is that the plan? Yeah. Not even mom and dad. No, no, maybe not. It, there's a so, like, there's like everybody's getting colds and sick and all that stuff, and you know, uh, the baby will be like a week or two old by that point. So yeah. it's you got to kind of stay stay away, I guess. Now, will that be the first time for you? That's got to be new for you. No, we did that with. Remember, with the, Aurelius was born right around the same time. Oh, yeah, so you guys did Thanksgiving by yourself. Yeah. So what you? we did is they people, you know, I think my parents came and stayed and they brought us food last Thanksgiving and we kind of. Oh my god! Or the last Katrina's time. family would freak out. They lose way. their minds. Yeah, I know. lose their minds. Well, my that's family not even too. a possibility. I have to play. Mm. You know. Golden. Yeah, I don't know how you because I, I I know your family is like her family yep. and that would be like unacceptable. There was a there was a big deal for us going up to we're going up to the 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 Truckee house, and um, you know two of the family members have dogs and just there's no dogs in the house that's part of the rule yeah. and so there was like this this big stink it, like this was leading up we had planned this for months or whatever and then the two family members that had the dogs that weren't really like doing anything about it like Katrina's like uh, what are we gonna do I said we're fucking going no matter what I said I hope your family comes <laughs> I hope everybody shows up there I don't give a shit if it's the three of us we're going up there if that's the plan and I can't we can't play this game that when you know oh it doesn't work out for two people so then we all default back to the same house at home like no like half of why we're getting properties like this is so <laughs> for holidays we can Her go family's just like mine. oh my god when I hear your stories it helps me because I can I know because you can understand Jessica's side I, I, yeah. I totally know I know that that's good for you because and it's good for Katrina to hear <laughs> the other side too because mm -hmm. there's she's the, she thinks that I'm so weird about that stuff and I'm like no it's like but I you know she I think she's really come around and realized that like I said because she's on the same page as I am as far as like kind of our goals, right? Like in, and one of the goals, especially with this, what we're doing on the real estate side is, man, I, one of the things I look most forward to with you guys is 
having all these incredible properties all over the country in areas that are we all desire to go. And to me, and obviously we work all the time. So the only time that we're going to be able to use those things is probably holiday. Holidays, yeah. And so what I envision in the future is that, you know, we're all kind of rotating on different ones. Yeah. Like, oh, Justin's over at the Truckee house. Now I'm going to go over to the Florida place. Oh, right, Sal's right. over at the Florida. I'm going to go to the Utah place. Right, like, right. And we are visiting these amazing places and bringing our families to enjoy it. And I'm like, I'm the, and I'm, I'm not going to stop that train. Like that's the the vision. That's where we're heading. And I sure hope the family can get on board yeah. and figure their shit out because they ain't going to pay for nothing. They just got to show up and we're oh, not going to. So gonna, you cover everything. You'll, you'll do the whole thing. Yeah. That, oh, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, they, they gotta, you got to get there. I yeah. mean, I'm not going to put your ga gas in your car or something like that. Like you should be able to <laughs> drive up to, you know, a three hour drive or whatever. Yeah, see, but, I got the opposite problem. So we're going to go ahead, you know, of you guys and try and do it like a bit early, like week early. And, uh, like, so my parents are like opportunists, you know, like they smell like an opportunity to like go stay somewhere. And they're like, oh yeah, cool. Like, so we'll be up there. I'm like, oh, here's the date. We're all going to go. Like, I'm, I'm going to make sure that we get everything ready. Like, oh yeah. Like we can be there three days early, you know, no problem. Like they want to like already be there. And like, so I'm like, no, you don't go before the host. Like you're the <laughs> guest. Like calm the fuck down. Like you guys stay there. We'll let you know, you know, when it's appropriate to come. But they do that every time. You like, know what's it, cool about, it's about hilarious. owning a, a property with you guys is it's so e we can just blame each other. Yeah. Oh, I, mom, I you do, can tell I me that. that. there, dude. He's, yeah. I do that every time. I mean, that's how I get out of the pet yeah. thing. Everyone, it is yoga them, naked outside. No, you don't want to go. Oh, there. it's not me. It's yeah. Doug. You know? Yeah, it's, <laughs> Doug wants no pets. <laughs> yeah, it's a big it's Doug. Yeah. If it wasn't for him. Yeah, it wasn't for Doug. We <laughs> Next time we have a big event, <laughs> Doug hates They're going to go up to him. He's like, what the fuck? Yeah, but you know him. He'll deep ball to be like, what's Adam's idea? We'll just play that old game. You know what I'm saying? Dude, it's all family stuff. But you know, you got families that love each other. That's the, I mean, that's it. Just, that's the best. That yeah. has to be the, I would think that has for to sure. be the one of, if not the most challenging things for all relationships, right? You tend to probably attract someone let, like the thing that I always remind Katrina and the thing that you always have to, I think, Sal, you have to remember too, is that like you and Katrina could never work. You guys would be at odds with the families because it would be like, whose family are we going to go to? Oh, you wouldn't, you just negotiate it. Cause I, when I was my, you know, the, when I was married before my first wife, her family was like that. So maybe not as much as mine, but still she had a decent amount of family. So we would just schedule it out. So one year it's this way, one year it's this way. When you, you have to schedule it out that way. So, yeah, but I'm sure they don't like but that. See, but see, well, <laughs> no, they're okay. See, here's the challenge. The challenge is if, if let's say Katrina's family knows you're doing a bit, you have a big family yourself and you're doing a big thing with your family, they're more likely to be like, that's cool versus no, we're just going to do something by ourselves. Then they'll be like, what do you mean by yourselves? Yeah, I yeah. bet you. That, that would be a bigger That's problem. a good point. I, I think yeah. that is a good point. Like if I, if we did, because we've done years before where Katrina did do something with my family and it was like, oh, we're going to go do Adam's family. It's like the yeah. first time in like five years. Because it's family, right? Yeah. But if I were to, if I were to tell Katrina like, hey, let's go to Hawaii, just yeah. the three of us. For <laughs> Everybody's going to think you're so <laughs> Oh weird. my yeah. God, bro. Oh, it'll be like the end of the world, dude. Oh, yeah. So. Jesus, I love, bro. I love it so I much. I can't stand it, dude. It, it makes me. me laugh. Well, because you know, because you're married to me. You yeah, yeah, yeah. You're married to me. <laughs> no. I don't, Jessica, so she's, she's, like, she's just like me when it comes no. to that stuff. Yeah, I guess you're right. You know, she is, bro. Yeah. I've heard her. I'm like, I totally get it. Yeah. She's on the same page as, you know, <laughs> and I think that the cool part is uh, it, that evolves and changes. Like, how many years now are you and Jessica? You guys are five what, four? together yeah how no many? almost seven god damn it's always seven I know, right so i i mean i see it i see and I, I even feel the feel the difference you know 12 years later like it's yeah. i mean it takes time because you i know that's every family though you you, you just got to learn each other's families you got to learn each other's you know the things that are important not important and you end up negotiating and working together it's just that's every family it's all just you guys it. wrestle over with your guys' two families yeah, I mean, we we kind of worked through it and like scheduling helped a lot and and all that. But uh, yeah, she, Courtney grew up in a lot bigger family than me, but has kind of a similar mentality as me in terms of like, yes, we go to all the things because like there's no shortage of birthdays, uh, you know, on that side of the family. So I'm like constantly having to come over the hill. But over the years, I've I've had to really be like, okay, we like we do this for every single kid. Like we got to kind of like group them together you know like let's make this a little bit more like attainable well you guys are bouncing for christmas right so yeah that, i mean the fact that is that and is that no 
struggle with you or her. Like you both, you two are on the same page it's, with that. So yeah, we they both want to escape. Yeah. We we <laughs> both yeah. That's kind of like exactly. I so think the four Christmases right away with that. She's <laughs> she's on board with me. We we kind of have our we we can do family in in a certain amount of time, and then it's like, dude, let's get out of here. Like it just uh, it's a lot. It's a lot of different. Um, uh, opinions and things. It's just too much, you know? So we're like, we got to get out here. So yeah, we, I think we probably piss off her family more than mine. I, I know my mom's a little late to like, you know, say how she really feels till after we probably come back. So I'm sure we'll get it. She you holds know, it we come back. Yeah, she holds it in. Like, I wonder where I get late. that from. Does she yeah. do the passive aggressive stuff? <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Like, dude, you that's, wouldn't believe. That's my family. Yeah. Jessica has a tough time with it too. Because we'll go visit my, my parents. Like little you know? comments. We'll go visit my parents. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, it's so good to see you. You guys never come over. I'm like, oh, God. That's my mom. Like Every ever. Time. We, we yeah. were just at my mom's like literally like, like really? two, week, two weekends ago. And we hadn't been there forever since that. And we were at her, at her place. It's her place that she's moved into. I've already actually been to her place now twice. But she was making a comment because I made a comment on like a, a painting I saw. I'm like, oh, that's a really cool painting. Where'd you get? When did you guys get that? Well, we've always had that. You just... You don't, you don't come around. Yeah, just, <laughs> oh, opportunity for <laughs> <laughs> Like, really? Like, first of all, I've been here more times than you've been to my house. And just, like, <laughs> cut me some slack, dude. Like, seriously. I got to the point where like, oh, you probably didn't see it because it's, you know, it's it, always been in my bedroom. It's just a, it's just a part of the yeah. way, you know, so I just like, all right, I'll just ignore all these little comments, you know, <laughs> unless I'm in a bad mood. Well, it too. doesn't, it doesn't yeah. seem to probably bother, like Katrina doesn't get as bothered by it. So it probably doesn't, because you guys are used to it. It's your family where it yeah. really bothers the partner. Like, I know mm -hmm. I'm sure it of bothers course. Yeah, because Jessica. when it's your family, you know, and you're already like, yeah. that's oh, that's just them. They're yeah, like exactly. that. Yeah, yeah. Right, <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious. right yeah. now they have the whole, <laughs> so the, 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 yeah, the baby of the family, he is getting married in, I want to say March in Texas. And he, he went out to Texas. He took a job out there like a year and a half, year ago, year and a half ago. And he met a girl and he like fell in love with her, her and her family. And everybody's fucking freaking out. Cause he's not, he's not even having the wedding over here. He's like, I'm oh, having, that's, I, I love Texas. That's a big deal. Texas is my family now. And like the wow. family's like, oh, the power oh, oh. bro, it's like drama family like, meeting oh my yeah dude family <laughs> meeting after family, family yeah. meeting yes dude i'm like dude just be happy for the kid you know what i'm saying <laughs> like so he calls me all the time now because he gets it he's just like i'm like bro i'm, I'm happy for you i'm glad for you yeah. you'll, you'll still make it over here he's like oh man i just i love it here you're just happy you're not the only one yeah like, bro yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> keep pissing everybody off and forget <laughs> yeah, about they forget uh -huh. about me <laughs> this hey hey that's what they they haven't figured out in the south. The cousins get married together. They don't have to worry about. Yeah. Oh, bro. Yeah, that's, that's, they, they, that's they, they worked it out. Doug, Doug I saw you, I see you you typed up and highlighted on the TV that we have a, a Black Friday apparel apparel sell on. We never talk about anything when it comes to the apparel. Oh, we do have a business, yeah. yeah. bro. It's, it's up to seventy percent off uh, select items, and then all equipment. People don't know this. We sell exercise equipment, like small stuff. Is that is this it complements all our maps program? Is this like our annual Very clearing nice out week. sale? Is that what's going on? I think so. Jerry typed that Nobody up. I didn't type it up. That was so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> we should ask the owners. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is so so this is happening Friday, November 25th. 70% off select items and equipment is 30% off. So this includes grip trainers and uh foam suspension rolls, trainers, suspension foam rollers. trainers. Yeah. What do you what do you stuff. guys anticipate for for Black Friday this year? Just in general, you think that like, like as far as consumers and stuff like that. I mm. mean one of the things that I find fascinating. Ooh, this is good. I have some speculations. Okay, so I wonder if it's going to be more because of more. inflation, because of the fact that they're getting a deal. Oh, uh, that's think, an interesting thing. I think more. Oh, also. you think too? Wow. You know why? Why? Because uh, people are going to save money at other times and yeah. then try to take advantage They'll of They'll justify sales it right now. Yeah, because often. it's cheap. Yeah. Interesting. That's, that's, I think that's my done? thought. I, yeah, it sounds like a reasonable. <laughs> prediction i don't know yeah, i don't yeah it's hard don't, to say yeah it, it is hard to say because here's the thing like even with with inflation going the direction it's going even with all these these massive layoffs with tech uh the spending, spending has really gone down spending, right yeah, we had we had growth in gdp yeah so we're we're, we're heading the other direction and it's it, people are and the but what's scary is like we're the at worst like spending habits ever i swear to god huh americans have the oh, worst no. spending oh and like you see what it is do you see where the credit card debt is like, oh it's like all time historical highs, like crazy. So, and the only thing that I can think of, because I remember this part, this time in my life, I remember being about 25 years old. I had bought my house when I was 20. So I had it by this time by four or five years. And I was riding that wave before the 08 crash. Oh, yeah. Right. So I bought my house, like in, I want to say 02, 03 ish, yep. somewhere yep. around that range. So I, I got to ride the wave up. And I remember uh, the way I felt 
when you know ho- houses in my neighborhood were selling for almost two x what I bought my mm-hmm. house for. Like the way I was using my credit card and stuff like that was always this attitude. I always had this attitude like, I mean, I really have like 300K in my savings. Yeah, yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm so like, what's that. the big deal about dropping 20K on the this credit illusion. card? illusion. Yeah. So I have to think that that's part of what's going on right now is that there's a lot of people that have bought houses, say five, six or more years ago that are sitting on hundreds of thousands of dollars in equity. So it's real easy to justify the $100,000 whip. Or I also think we've had 10 years of, mm-hmm. of economic growth. So you have a lot of habits right. that are hard to break. Mm-hmm. You know how hard it is to get, so like, think about it this way. It's, 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 hard as it, it's, it's as hard to change somebody's spending habits, like fundamental spending habits, as it is to get them to change their diet. Yeah. Literally, it's just as hard. So people typically don't make changes unless they're forced. Like shit really hits the fan. Mm -hmm. So in other words, they're not like looking ahead. You know what I mean? They're like, well, we're kind of, we're okay. Or uh," rather than being like, oh shit, it's going the wrong direction. We should be more careful. And that's evidenced by this massive credit card (laughs) debt. Like people are not cutting. (laughs) They want to keep spending like they were before. Wonder how long it's going to take before the, before the, was it the last straw? Well, we're seeing things. We are seeing things. Like, so, uh, you know, interesting. St- I had put it in the notes, but Doug didn't want to put my notes up there for some reason. Um, He's also boring. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Save it, for, for, <coughs> it was he, in the, he uh, Airbnb. It you saw it because I put it in the yeah. thread about Airbnb. So Airbnb is is uh, down fifty percent in uh, occupancy right now. Oh, okay, so you so, are starting to see some stuff. So yeah, so people are 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 cutting back. On. I mean, it, it also going to be interesting to see how that impacts the the housing market. A lot of people bought properties with you know based on the valuation of their you know occupancy being at say 70 percent right and so a lot of those you know pro formas are going to be off now people are not going to they're not if, if that comes way back then you have areas i mean and this is an area that i think will affect us with you're know, talking about the utah property now what i hope our saving grace is i was explaining this to katrina when she was like are you worried i said well the reason why i'm not is because we were kind of going after a different demographic in the first place, right? So in our in our neighborhood in Utah, there's probably, as far as I'm aware of, at least 10 to 15 other like identical uh, short-term rental properties. Very competitive. They're all really nice. They all look about the mm-hmm. same. They're all very similar in square footage, like in, 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 in right in our neighborhood and priced very similar. Well, we weren't even looking at them as a way to compare like what we were doing. We are going after this whole, you know, cold plunge saunas. I mean, there's like a quarter million dollars worth of stuff going in. It's a different our, experience. It is a different experience. Yeah. Now, uh, what sucks is what we thought we might be able to get as a premium for, you know, some time is w- may not happen, but what it will do is it will give us leverage to outcompete any right. of our neighbors. Right. So, you know, if, if it if push comes to shove, all we have to be is competitive in price and there's no reason why we shouldn't win the occupancy game in our in our neighborhood right. always because of what the amenities that we put in there. So there is some you know some light at the end of the tunnel for us with with that. But I do think that it's gonna it's gonna take a big hit. Yeah, I know? I think so. But I think what's so I remember after 08, um, 08 was bad. It was really bad. A lot of people um, did very poorly on 08. However, I remember people because I had fam- I have family members that, that work in real estate were already really established. So the market took a hit. All the okay real estate agents were gone, but the really, really good ones. I mean, I had family members are like, oh, I got people coming in, buying these houses cash, hand over fist. So there's like that upper, you know, kind of income type people or whatever that when shit goes down, they go in and they make big purchases. I remember that. Do you guys remember that after 08? There were people buying houses. Oh, well, I mean, we'll see oh, that yeah. again. Because they're like, oh, the prices are down. Let's just buy them all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they'll, they'll, we'll see that again. I mean, I think that's the the move for us is to to pay close attention to when that starts to happen because there's gonna be a there's gonna be a time though in between that. Right. So we're we are at the where you gotta kinda wait. Yeah, we are <clears throat> the top of I think um, everybody coming out. I mean, I think uh, uh, Patrick Bet David gave really good advice. I think uh, Chris brought hit brought that advice up in the the talk that we had on the live. Just that if you were going to go in, <clears throat> whether it be an investment or the house you're going to live in, and make an offer today on something you really like, you should offer it at twenty to thirty percent less of what it's what they're asking for right now, and just and just because you might get it. Yeah, mm-hmm. you might get it. 
And if you and if you do get it, you're you're basically pricing in what a lot of people are starting to predict is going to happen over the next year. Oh, year. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So you're, you're so you'll kind of so protect it for the job. Yeah, you, you protect yourself from the job. You go, oh, this house. I love this house. I think it's <clears throat> a relatively fair price where it's at. I'm going to offer twenty percent underneath. That way, when the shit so goes that down. when everything goes down yeah. over the next year or so, that's smart. Yeah, yeah, I'm at least I'm not like negative big time, and so then you're okay. And, and if all the numbers still work out for that price, and that's and so that's kind of how. I would treat it for us. Like if we're looking at property, I, I still would be looking now. And if we fell in love with something, it'd be like, okay, I love it. Let, let's offer 15, 20, 30% under what, what it's asking and then see what happens. Very I think smart. that's the move until then. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to move towards <clears throat> nutrition for a second. Cause I read this, uh, very well read article that made some really good points on grass fed meat. Okay. So the article essentially was, um, you know, is grass-fed meat worth the, the the investment or is this something that you should focus on? And what the article said, and I like it because it takes the position, it's very objective, it takes a similar position to the like organic conversation where people are like, should I go organic? And they say, well, some fruits and vegetables have much higher pesticide loads than others. For example, fruit that you eat the skin <coughs> like berries. versus fruits that you peel because the pesticides on like an avocado, you could take off the, the mm -hmm. rind or whatever. You're not going to get or a banana or a banana. Yeah. Right. So they were, he was talking about, or this person was talking about um, grass fed meat and said, the biggest differences in the meat are found in the fat. Mm -hmm. So grass fed versus conventional meat, where you'll notice the differences is the fat is in the fat, the fatty acid profile. It changes the profile completely, it right? Well, not completely, but, but significant, like yeah. enough to where it's measurable. And if you eat a lot of this meat, it makes a big difference. And so he said, if you're going to go grass fed and you're also trying to save money, it's the fatty cuts of meat where you're going to get the benefit. Cause that's where you see the difference in the omega three versus omega six fatty acids and so on. Now there's some nutrient differences as well, but it's the fatty cuts of meat that make the biggest difference. So I thought that was, uh, it's an important thing to communicate to people who are trying. So to are save. you saying that like, mm -hmm. even like if you were to compare, like if I'm going to do a cut, like a ribeye, it makes more sense yes. than if I was doing a cut, like a filet mignon. Yes. Oh, okay. 100%. Oh, okay. Because the fat is where you see the difference. Otherwise, it's not a huge oh, difference. interesting. Okay. And then, of course, and then it also said if you eat a lot of red meat, like I eat uh, probably cl close to a pound of red meat a day. So it makes well, sense for me to go. That's easier too to get by because like, sometimes it's tough, you know, like the grass fed, like that's sort of like some of the feedback is like, you know, it's leaner. It's a, yeah, it's a bit yeah. leaner. And so to, to go more into the, you know, fattier cuts, like that's usually what I did anyways, because it tasted better. Well, yeah. my, my discipline is this when I'm home, I'm cooking my butcher box stuff. When I'm out to eat, I enjoy it. I enjoy a, a you know fatty Kim cooled up steak. That's how I do it. Well, I mean, well, I mean, you know, they don't really have grass fed at restaurants, do they? Sometimes oh, they do. do. They? Oh, yeah. yeah, some places. Yeah. Some places. Yeah, some places. But I'm like do. you. I'm gonna eat out. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to worry about it. Yeah. When I'm, yeah. I'm gonna eat out, I don't give me I'm, the engineered one. That, yeah, yeah <laughs> or whatever. exactly. Yeah. Give me, give me the one you grain Actually, fed that cow up. Right? Speaking of ribeye, massaged his belly for like. Speaking six of ribeye, but, uh, <laughs> Doug, isn't butcher is butcher box doing the the, the ribeye free ribeyes right now? Yeah, free ribeyes for a year. A year plus ten dollars off so you sign up for a sign box up. and they'll send you a free ribeyes with your box for yeah. a year plus ten dollars yeah. off so that's a huge uh, huge Speaking promotion grass-fed meat yeah. uh actually this has nothing to do with that but uh led zeppelin <laughs> you know the lead singer uh, <laughs> robert plant <laughs> yeah what about it? <laughs> i found out this really interesting thing about it which i was like speaking of grass -fed king, king yeah. of transitions right yeah. there so <laughs> what's the Gra I got grass is kind of a plant well, well, uh, he, he, he's, he's a piece of meat i mean he's he's a specimen but uh so back in the day they used to wear like really uh, like um extravagant kind of clothing and whatnot on stage yeah and like you know and sometimes it was like flashy feminine like whatever like they just like he'd wear robes and all this kind of stuff well i don't know if you guys knew, knew this but i guess there's this whole thing where he would at the show like he would meet some girls you know backstage whatever like whoever he uh basically banged that night like he would take their clothes and then wear on stage the next oh, the next show that's how it worked i was out? like that makes perfect sense because it didn't like i was like where is he finding this outfit like it just did it's like <laughs> totally like too short like if you look at all the pictures of him it's you'll like see. a nod to the chick you know yeah what I'm saying? it's like he's wearing some midriff <clears throat> thing and then like some robe and some silky and like dude he, like i thought that was is just like a, a i mean is, is he a small guy 
guy? Like, does he like how does he fit in the same clothes? I, that's a good. I didn't fit him. That's that's the whole point. Is like it didn't <laughs> look was, like it even fit. And I was like, what is he doing? That's how he picks the girls. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how tall oh, are this you? One's like what a, size are you? Are you a size five? Let me yeah, see your dress real yeah. quick. All right, we'll so, go back to my room. But I thought that made sense. Is when, you Robert be, when you become so rich and famous, you do weird shit. Like, well, you know what? That's like yeah. a version. That's a version of what dudes used to do in high school, and they get in a fight, and then they if they won, they would take the guy's hat and then wear it to school the next day. Do you guys do that? No, I didn't. Oh know. yeah. It was like the ultimate, like that's like, like your trophy that you're just that's kind of that's kind of cool actually. Yeah, yeah. I've never, never heard even think of doing that. That's like the ultimate. It's also messed up. That's then like you go the, to school and, and everybody knows. Hat. Wow, I've like, never I, even heard that. I, really, you. that was a thing. That was a thing, dude. Wow. Yeah, you do wear the guy's huh. like you wear the guy's hat. That was a big one, and then you walk around and you wear it all year. You wear a starter jacket. <laughs> Hey, wow. you know what's funny? That's wow. a move, man. Literally, it's assault and theft. Literally, it's like two <laughs> two felonies. It's double whammy right there. He did there. two felonies right there. Yeah. Is Robert Plant, is he the one that he was? He used to wear the tight-ass pants and mm -hmm. all the girls would talk about his whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he that throws was his junk out there. Yeah, yeah The dude. whole audience. See, and like, ah. that's your, that could have been your transition. Speaking of me. Well, that's uh, what I was. Look at you helping him out with the transition. I got you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that's kind of where I was going, but not that specific. So, um, <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> you, the details. Hey, what did you guys think of that uh, that docu series, uh, Killer Sally? Oh, that was good, dude. Uh, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is crazy. I remember that. So Vaguely do I. remember it. Like, I do. I, rem I remember. When that, that was, was crazy news in the bodybuilding. <laughs> That's when I was all in the bodybuilding magazines. Okay, yeah. so that sparked up an interesting conversation with Katrina and I because she watched it with me, and uh, she's like, "So I, I'm confused because I feel like I've heard you guys talk about steroids before," and she's like, "You know, they really." you know, painted him as this like kind of monstrous guy because yeah. of all the amounts of steroids he was taking. She goes, I thought you said that it really doesn't do that to you. Let's, let's talk about this. Yeah. yeah so so. I, I, and I said, you know, I said, the reason why they did that in court is because there still is this stigma around that. I was like, there's still, it, there still is this stigma around taking testosterone. And so it makes you this crazy person or this this asshole and stuff like that. If you're an asshole, it can make it you a bigger, stronger exaggerates asshole. the asshole that's already there. Well, well there's yeah. two things. One is we don't have studies on the doses that bodybuilders take and how mm. it affects the psyche. We just don't. Mm -hmm. Number two, it's far more likely to affect the psyche and personality of a woman than it is a man because they're androgens. They're male hormones. And it model it literally changes the way the brain uh, functions and looks. So women can often, and I've talked to women who've taken steroids, and they'll tell me that their personalities change from like going on low start, doses. Like, objectifying, women. dude. The way, well, just weird. It just changes the things. way they did that doc, that. like how the first two episodes they they tell you're the on story. one side. Yeah, you totally are on one side, and you're like, damn, she yeah. got fucked, man, yeah. and you feel hella bad for her, and then they like all of like, a sudden, oh, all oh the, she's crazy too. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm like, oh, she's hella it's crazy. Not, you're well, not alone. One yeah. more thing. This is now. This is something that I, I want to speculate on. First off, these are doses of anabolics. We have no studies on. They're super, super high doses. Do androgens affect uh, personality, libido, mood? They definitely do. They definitely do. That's why when you're low, you notice a difference. When you're when you're in the high normal, you feel better. So at super high levels, there's got to be some changes. I think if you're borderline that's where you get some problems. So if you're, and think about the kind of person that obsesses so hard about being a bodybuilder, they're willing to live super poor. Okay, like they so did. That, this is the point I made to Katrina. I said, you, you take somebody who is probably already a very insecure person and you hop them up on a bunch of drugs like that. What's probably a bigger correlation is less to do with the steroids and more to do with the insecurity. It's all of a it, massively guess, yeah. insecure person like that is more likely to hit a woman and a woman is more likely to hit a man if you're massively insecure like that. So I'm like, if you take that person who's been building this shell to protect their insecurities their entire yeah. life, then you hop them up all kinds of steroids and then you put them in a relationship that's toxic and unhealthy. I'm like, yeah, I mean, yeah. That, that could possibly happen. But I'm like, I was explaining to her, I'm like, imagine if your hormone levels were all off and you had to have a hysterectomy and you went through all the stuff that like my mom went through. I said, uh, you probably would definitely feel it and maybe you'd be more irritable. But do you think you would also shoot me with a shotgun because no. of that? Like, no, you so wouldn't. Because you're they, not the type of person that would do that. Yeah, so I think that they were already border. You know yes, what I mean? I totally. feel like they were already kind of border. She's obviously, obviously obsessive. She's yeah. obviously got aggression <laughs> issues. Then you give her a ton of steroids and then exactly what you said. Yeah. Plus- pre-contest, they're dieting, they're irritable at the same time. Yeah. You know how it is when you're you're dieting for a show 
Now imagine your spouse is also dieting for a show and you have kids and you're trying to make bills. Well, it's a bad combination. Didn't they also say that he was like sexually abused growing up? Yeah, that's that what too? I mean. Yeah, They've so got lots of issues. That's what I mean. All, that, all feeding into that. That, again, that, so all those things connect to being an abusive person yep. more than the elevated level of testosterone. And then you add all that and then you Just throw gasoline. a bunch of testosterone yeah. on it. Then like, and yeah, other shit. yeah. Then yeah. you're, then you're like, that. you know what? It also brought up a conversation for her and I was, uh, you know, when I got into the the space, so I was totally unaware of like the muscle worship community oh, yeah. and all that stuff oh, of that. Right. And I remember getting solicited for that and like not thinking it was like a real thing at first and then realizing like, oh, this is like a, people were off when I was doing a lot of posts of like my body, like changing and stuff like that. And I was posting all the time on it, like Instagram <laughs> that I was getting Didn't all- did you get invited down to some dude, like all kinds expensive of stuff. party that you were supposed to, you were going to, you were going to like, like hand out drinks yeah. and like, yes, underwear. yes, they were. <laughs> And and every, was, and every time I they were going to give you a lot of money, right? Yeah, it was a lot. It was like ten thousand to go there, and then and all were, you have to do is serve drinks. Yeah, yeah. But right? then what happens is this: so they, that's I, <laughs> I would get solicited by these these guys like this, where it would be like, oh, these parties or these things that I that they would offer to, and then as I like was intrigued because they would present it in a way where I'm like. Oh, fucking shirt off. Like I'm already po I'm posting with yeah. my shirt off. Yeah, you're confident. Yeah. I'm like, whatever. Yeah, some dude says something to me. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not even thinking like that. And I'm like, and then the kind of money they were offering, I'm like, okay, I'm intrigued. Tell me more. And then as they tell you more, you say, well, you know, you might be, this might happen and this and happen. So are you comfortable with that? And then, and Is it they, okay if they do this. Yeah. You start hearing some of that. And you're like, whoa, 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 wait a second. You know, and then they start, <laughs> then it became very obvious. Obviously after I had Adam's like, I don't know, $20, $20. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I Maybe I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, good thing things were going all right for me. Maybe it would have. Well, I told Katrina, I mean, it's a, it's a, you know, in with the, it's a weird world. It is a very, it is a weird, cause you have a bunch of insecure people that's yeah. largely makes up the bodybuilding space. Sorry. They all, they're all body, super body focused. They're so obsessed with what they're doing that they'll do anything to be able to do it. So that means if they, you know, need to do things that are a little questionable a lot of them may do it. So you you mix that in. Well, it's also and you get a lot of these guys that get convinced and, and girls that muscular women going, wrestle yeah. dudes. Well, look for at, money. look at well, look how it started for her. I mean, she never even had sex with any of them. No, so no. she just pretty, wrestled them. Yeah. I mean, kind of hard not like uh, think of how broke they were. They were broke. Yeah. yeah. They were broke trying to get by and stuff like that. And these dudes are paying her thousands of dollars a week to like put them in a headlock. You know, yeah. she doesn't gotta fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like she's yeah, just wearing like, them. Right. I know. And of course it's like <laughs> sexual. It's like it is, they're getting off on it. But they're not they're not having sex with her like you yeah. could see how that turned into i mean it, some of the things i got hit up were being offered just send me a video of you flexing your biceps like oh flexing so, your chest i mean you know what like they offered me a couple hundred so bucks a uh, couple hundred bucks and yeah. it was like you just want me to do a video of me like flexing yeah, i already have five of those videos on my phone I'm just <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're just picturing the guy on the other end of that just <laughs> Oh, that's, what, that's, that's why I do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what would work? Thank God my pump dude. took off. Hey, you, know what, you know what would work? If a guy really, I'm going to give somebody, that this. if you're a dude and you want to solicit dudes for flexing, get a girl to ask for the pictures because the dude will give it to him for free. Oh, yeah. And then, well, remember that Remember that? Um, that documentary on the on all the internet scams that are out yeah. there and that one guy who's like, I could, I could, I could, get someone to give me like five grand yeah. like right now. Yeah. All he, and he would t talk about how he would rip all the pro the, all the pictures from a, like a, a model and build a, and, an start the DMs. and then just like start flirting in the DMS and then get them oh, to buy yeah. a plane ticket and pay for their stuff. And then like, like, like that, God, like well, be able to fly out to Dubai. Guys are easy was to a manipulate. football player that got like wrapped into oh, all that. That was so, so sad. So sad that was, oh, that was, that was a uh, Manti tail. Man that yeah. was such Dude, a, such was, a sad story, oh, bro. So sad. Such a but, nice guy that just got totally bro, destroyed his career. Yeah. I mean, he he never he never came back from that. That that's that's aw you know what's what's so awful about that too is that that person didn't get hardly anything happen to them. Like there's like no, but you like yeah. literally destroyed that dude's career and life and. Got, it was like a, oh you know it was like a, a no big deal type of deal I think it was yeah, such no. bullshit so do you guys so looking Awful. at that whole case with uh, with Sally McNeil I mean I think although she was aggressive bro the, she was, the, I think the she lawyer was, the lawyer it was Katrina and I said if the lawyers were flipped it goes the complete opposite totally way. dude complete opposite suck. way because she was definitely a battered woman I mean I mean I know she hit him back she did a lot of stuff for, also but she was terrified dude this the dude was way he was fucking aggressive broke her face did all stuff. Like at some point it's going to be a bit premeditated. Like at some point you're gonna be like, I have to kill this dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The if next he time he does me. something crazy to me, I'm going to do it. Totally. I mean, the kids said that they, they she can got hear 25 her. years, dude. 
Uh, she should have got five. In my opinion, she got one to five mm-hmm. at the most. For doing so that. I, 100% that was a case manipulated 100% by the lawyers. Yep. That lawyer, the lawyer who just had, it was like some up and coming like shark yep. that saw the, he went after that case. Yep. He saw the opportunity to paint wanna it in, in a certain, want to make a name for himself. Mm. And he absolutely did. And he destroyed that. It was, the case was over right out the gates when he had the forensic person come in and yeah. show like how she was shot because she claimed in her original uh, interrogation. She like she, he was coming for her when she shot Yeah, him. coming after her. But what the forensic show shows, she had to go all the way back into the, 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 the other room to get another shotgun yeah. shell, walked out and shot him when he was on the ground. Like people that is what put pe- her away. And people don't mm. understand in situations like that when a person is abused physically, especially a woman, years and years and years and years, they develop this... PTSD type uh, mentalities, personality. It's not a re it's like their thought process changes. They, Mm -hmm. and so it can be a bit premeditative. I mean, she could have poisoned him in my opinion, not saying that that's not wrong, but I think it should be punished differently. You know what I'm saying? Because she's trying to survive this guy. Yeah. It's the environment that is a product byproduct of the environment. Did you, Oh, you know what really tripped me out is her kids. Now they're older and they're talking about the case. You could see that the, the boy, the son who's now an adult man, he was still terrified oh, when he, he was talking. He was tapping and moving the whole time. I was yeah, talking dude. Oh, yeah, so was, traumatized oh, by the yeah. whole thing. I mean, that's the, that's, yeah, that's what my heart breaks for the you see. I, I, oh, I hate when that. When I watch stuff like that, it's so weird how it uh, it resurfaces stuff from from my child. Oh, and I, really? Well, yeah. Well, I mean, I get emotional, and you know, half of it is because obviously I relive my stuff, but then I also go like that. Fucking what, what I went through was nothing compared to that. Yeah. I mean, nothing. I felt like I see that, and I know how traumatizing it was to see. Shit as a young kid and then i see something like that i'm like what I, mine was like a picnic compared to what the what that those kids saw like could you imagine like seeing that type of abuse and then seeing your mom fucking shoot your dad's face off with a yeah. shotgun like oh my god yeah, I bro. Know. that makes me oh feel so bad. God, that was yeah. bad i'm gonna take it in a more positive note here about with kids but uh my my son is so cute dude he's so first off i know i've been talking about this his language skills are going are advancing so fast. He keeps saying things that I didn't know that he knew, you know, that, you know what certain things were like treasure and then he'll start stringing sentences together. It's really cool. But he's super affectionate and he does this thing. He's such my he's so my son, right? If I'm holding him, he, one of it, he has to play with my ear with one of his hands. Oh, I love that. That's he awesome. does this, does your boy That's awesome. do stuff like that? Yeah, he, your son's very yeah, affectionate yeah, yeah. too. He does this thing where he, he does this thing where he does he does your remember I have seen you guys show you guys pictures. I did, he falls asleep with Katrina like that. He'll lay next to her and he has to like stroke her I love it. stroke her face to fall asleep. It's like the cutest thing ever. I see. love it. And when we're watching TV, he, we'll let him watch TV every once in a while and we're sitting there and he has to sit right like in my armpit. And then he he wants to play with my hand while we're watching it. And I'm just like I can't, I can't, it's going to suck when that goes away. Cause at he, some point, I know he does this. It'd be weird doing that with your teenage it's, son. What's wild is <laughs> Katrina's mom was it's telling me point where it's, <clears> what it's I always simple. think is neat when you see these, these patterns that were in you or in her, right. That she had like, so yes, her mom would tell me that her, she used to do the same exact thing that he does, which, which is so weird. Cause it's not like it's a learned behavior. She's never, I've never seen her do it cause she's an adult, but as a kid, she used to do this where she, he, he, and he'll do this. He'll come over and sit like he'll sit in your lap and then he'll just put his arms out like this. And he wants you to like drag your fingers over and he'll just sit there and he'll be playing, a, you know, playing with his iPad or watching something and doing something. And he just wants you to sit there and drag your fingers back and forth on his forearms. And he'll literally, he'll lay his arm in your lap in order to do that. If, and, it, and so nobody taught him that. Yeah. Nobody taught yeah. him that. Isn't that weird? You know, it's so weird that they, they, they have that in them, you know, and that was something that Katrina did as a kid. I think that's so interesting. How it's that funny. Cause like, down. we're not real like mas- massage therapists or anything. Nobody like in our family, but Courtney every now and then will <clears> like, uh, massage Everett, and he just like he just is like, oh, amazing! <laughs> <He's just, laughs> like, it's so, so funny. He like requests it now, like she did it once, and then I was like, oh, you opened up a can oh, yeah. with him, like and he's he's just like, oh, oh can I get a massage? Oh. Yeah. One day he'll be doing that to, to his mom. Yeah, I was like, yeah, you got to reciprocate yeah. if you're gonna. Uh, how old, now? How old is he right now? Nine. Nine, yeah. yeah. So you got at least a few more years of him thinking you guys are great. Yeah, well, I mean, he, <laughs> I know. It, it's, it's borderline, dude. I, like, I'll so, pick him up, and he gets so pumped if I pick him up from school, which always, like, I love that. And then yeah. he was, like, holding my hand. As I'm like, wow, you still want to hold my hand, dude? Like, we're, you know, like, I'll take it, you know, but I was surprised. That what, I was like, he's still like what, that. What is it you guys think? Because there, 
there are exceptions to the rule where you see kids that still have like the the bond with their like I I remember when I was first talking about you know Max and our bond and, and then you know people oh enjoy it while it lasts and this and that and I'd be like well it's been lasting this entire time still for me and then I'd have other people that message be like let's don't listen to everybody else my my husband and my son are you know he's 20 years old and they're still inseparable and they do stuff together and they're like, they love being- You're always going to have a good bond with your kid, Adam. That's a hundred percent. The difference is that they become more independent. Yeah. And so like the sitting on your lap and the, snuggling- The bonding changes a yeah, little at some, bit. Yeah, at some there. point it feels like for him, he'll feel like, I'm not going to sit- Okay, so that, that's my point though of asking because I feel like I've seen exceptions where that's not true. Like I look at my, I have an uncle who has two daughters and one of the coolest things to watch and they're-, they're No, father daughter is different. Well, <laughs> that, no, it is like, like my, my, my sisters will sit on my dad's lap and hug yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're 20 years old. I they still both rest, rest their heads on their lap uh, yeah. in his lap. And he's always, you I know. do that with my mom too. But with my dad, it'd be weird. You know what I mean? Sit on my dad's lap and have him like <laughs> 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 snuggle up. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, I, you know, I yeah. kiss my dad to say hi and we hug, you know, I'll put my arm around him. Yeah. But it's different now with my mom, pff, my mom, I, I hug, I kiss her and hug her so much. She tries to run away from me. I squeeze her and oh, okay. do the whole thing. And you know, my sisters are like that with my dad and. So then, so then, so then, the theory is then that when, as they get older, it's the uh, the opposite sex, right? So yeah. then, he he will most likely be more attached to her in that area physically when he gets old older. And then, if I had a daughter, it's more likely that the daughter would be. You know there. how I can tell my dad. So my dad will hug us. You know, he's he's, he's a hugger, and you know, we, we kiss each other, say hi. But when I know he really wants to like to snuggle, he wrestles. What he does, he'll grab me. <laughs> he'll grab me and start fucking with me. Yeah, you know, and we we'll start dude. wrestling and shit. And I'm like, yeah. you just want to hug me. Yeah. And then he starts laughing. He's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But this is better. Yeah. He's yeah. <laughs> yeah. still tough as nails too. Like that. Yeah. It's embarrassing. Uh, it's You're right. old now. I shouldn't uh, be able to do this. That's, that's anyway. So, cool. so hey, so uh, we're supposed to talk about Viore. So I wore. Um, one of their newer, I don't know if this is a newer shirt, but the material is interesting. You've been, uh, you've been shopping quite a bit. I, what's I, the, what's the deal? I love Are you stuff. outgrowing all your other yeah. stuff? No, I told them. I, I got, you, you know, pull our, off the vertical or the horizontal stripes. It man. makes that's, me look that's harder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, I said, Hey, what's you the deal? Off the How many clothes do you guys send us? Adam and Justin don't want anything. Just send me there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, that's yeah. why I haven't got anything. For no, a while. it's, it's, it's consistently, you know, I get compliments consistently. And I, you know what I, you know, what's like, I think under, Maybe, I don't know if people know this uh, about Viore, but they have a lot of like nicer clothes. Like this isn't necessarily workout clothes, but it's something you would wear to go my out. Favorite, my favorite yeah. part about that company and that brand, like, I mean, it's so it's so cool to, we're going on like five years that, we, that we've been with them. Like, and it's funny too, now people, I had someone actually message me just a couple of weeks ago about like, Oh my God, you guys are so big now because they saw Viore running in ad. Plus, I'm just like, so, mm -hmm. the company that's been with us for five years now or whatever. So it's cool to see them grow to what they are. But one of the, my favorite things about them is that you can dress it up or down. That's right. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it, you that's can, you put it on with some, like you have it on right now with like some of like this kind of slack type pants and then it dresses up. You could also could have been in your workout pants just 20 minutes ago or shorts and then you could totally work out it because it's breathable and it's yep. comfortable yep. so you can go either way with yep. it they do a good job man yeah. i think they're saying it's funny i mean five years ago when we started with them they were they've they're been getting better like the the way that they've been de designing shirts and you know they have like flannels now and everything and, like, that's for you super Justin. stoked yeah I feel like, I like that for you oh yes yeah, so, like they actually have stuff I, i'll rock constantly so yeah, yeah it's easy good job Hey, real quick, you might have heard of CBD and all its great benefits, but here's the problem. All the CBD products on the market suck. You take them and you don't feel them. Well, that's not true with Ned. Ned products are full-spectrum hemp oil extracts with CBD and all the cannabinoids that give you anti-inflammatory effects, the euphoric, awesome feelings, the enzyolytic, anti-stress effects. This is a CBD product you feel, and one of the products I love the most, it's their, bla their brain blend. Take this before creative endeavors, before work, before reading, before watching a cool movie. The euphoric creative feeling you get from it's pretty awesome. Go check this company out. They're the best hemp oil product company on earth. Go to helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump and get hooked up on that link. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Kaylin from Wisconsin. Kaylin, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys, uh, first off, I just want to say I've been a huge fan of the show for about a year now and uh, you guys have completely revamped everything I thought I knew about exercise. So thank you very much for awesome. what you do. Cool. My question has to do with uh, protein intake. 
So in a couple of weeks here up in Wisconsin, I'll be spending about a week um, hunting, during which time I'll probably be eating about one real meal a day. Uh, I'm not going to be working out that entire week. And if I'm honest with myself, I'm probably not going to be doing my trigger sessions um, either. Um, so I was trying to figure out how much like protein powder to bring with me and how many protein bars and stuff like that. Um, and that stuff is expensive. So then I was started wondering if I'm not even going to be doing trigger sessions, I won't be exerting myself at all. I'll just be sitting in a tree stand really. Um, how important is it for me to be hitting my protein intake of, uh, or my protein target of about 140 grams a day? I know you guys have talked, um, about how good trigger sessions are at maintaining muscle mass during a period where you might not be working out all that much. Um, but that's not really my concern here. My concern is protein. Are you, are you getting ready for a bodybuilding show in a couple months? No, nothing like that. You're then who, it. Then who cares? Dude, you got seven days hunting, bro. Enjoy your hunt. Enjoy your hunt. Be present, you know, get, get connected to the earth. What meditate, do whatever. I mean, I wouldn't even trip. Yeah. You're, you're overthinking it. I yeah. mean, a week, a week of going to lower protein intake is is really not going to hurt you. And whatever, if you did, it would come back so fast the following week. So here's a, here, let's do this. What's the goal with the hunting? What what are you trying to accomplish during that week of of hunting in the probably wilderness? to kill an animal? Well, I mean, besides I mean. that, like, what do you want to get out of it? Right. State the obvious. Let's, let's go there. Uh, like Adam said, it's just to <laughs> get a kill. That's about right, it. Right. But I'm assuming you don't hunt because you you need food. And if you don't hunt, you're not going to, you're going to starve. In other words, you're hunting, you're choosing to hunt because you enjoy it. Because like, what do you want to get out of it besides, you know, actually getting an animal? It'll be my first time hunting and I'm looking to just have a good time and experience the whole hunting dude. lifestyle. Yeah, dude, even even more reason. You're even totally more. overthinking yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, even more reason. Okay. Look, when you're out there, and I'm sure you're whoever's taking you out there, because I'm sure you're going with somebody that's experienced, Yeah, you're going to be hiking and walking quite a bit out in the wilderness. You don't want to carry a lot of weight. Even 10 pounds on your backpack, uh, it's, it's, it starts to wear on you after a, partic- after a while. So what you want to do is you want to pack foods that are energy dense, that are convenient, um, things that'll keep you know, your digestion okay because you don't want to have any digestive in- issues out there without a bathroom or whatever. Um, and just enjoy the hunt. Don't worry about it. I mean, <clears throat> you're going to be totally fine. You could fast for a week and you'll be fine. I'm not, not, not recommending that. I'm just saying you're totally overthinking it. You're not going to lose all your gains. It's not going to set you back um, you know, months or whatever. Worst case scenario, you come back, you work out in the gym. The first workout feels a little tough. By the second, third workout, you're back to where you were before. Yeah, I mean, I would go, I guess I would be more focused probably on my training and diet heading into that week off. So, I mean, making sure you're you're hitting it pretty hard and consistent yeah. and and dialed in nutritionally. And then the seven days, I would I would I really wouldn't worry too much about it. I mean, to Sal's point, I wouldn't water is more the most important thing. Yeah. I mean, I would I would enjoy the hunt. I'd enjoy the hunt. I'd have some beef jerky and some granola bars or whatever on it on me. And I would just I would enjoy what you're about to go experience. I've always wanted to do this anyways. I've never done this. And I absolutely would not give two shits about my protein intake for the week, just being straight up because unless I was getting ready for a show, that's why I asked that first. I mean, if you have like, we cannot lose a pound of muscle and it's very, I mean, that's, but if you don't have crazy physique goals where you have a timeline, like coming up in a totally month, fine. Like, yeah, totally fine. And and in fact, if you've been training hard and consistent leading up to it, you we there, the, you probably could benefit from yeah, the week off. Anyway. Yeah. I, we, we, I've, you've probably heard us talk about the study that took the two groups that were, you know, three on three on one off where they trained three weeks straight, one week off. And they compared them to the group that took no days off uh, at the end of the the study. Uh, both groups saw the same gains. So, I mean, you, there's there's a lot of value in, in actually taking off potentially the week. Is that due to an increase in protein sensitivity? I mean, maybe uh, it, it also when you take time off, when you're training hard, that's usually when muscles grow. I mean. <clears throat> there's a lot of potential reasons as to why, but one thing is for sure. And here's the fact you'll be totally fine. You're going to be totally fine with that week. If you don't eat your pro- protein targets, mm-hmm. I would bring foods that are convenient, easy to digest. Don't weigh a lot. That way you can focus on the most important thing, which is the experience. You know, you don't want to miss out on the experience because you're worried about, you have to have 140 grams of protein a day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Excellent. Thank you so much, guys. You got Excellent. it, man. Thanks for calling in. All righty. Yeah, I wonder how many people have ruined uh, experiences because I mean I did. Back I mean in the day. I get it. I get I get it. I mean I'm, I'm sure it's a question I probably would have asked 
You know? I did back in the day. I mean, how many times I go on vacation was just you know, was yeah, more just, worried about access to the gym and food that I could have, and I miss out on this incredible experience as a result of it. You know, yeah. um, he's he's going on a hunt for a week. He's that's that's like that's what you need to focus on. Yeah, just enjoy your experience. I mean, I'm sure whoever's gone with him is going to be cracking open a beer and like hanging out. <laughs> you know, like he, nobody wants to be with that guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> coming yeah. in like worried about his protein intake, but. You know, I get it. If you're like hitting strides and you're doing really well, like, you know, it's always a consideration. But, dude, uh, you also have to make room for life. I mean, I, I, I like that we get questions like this because it gives us the opportunity to have to have this conversation that, you know, because I probably would have asked a question like this back then. And I just think it's important that people- dude, I was like this when I was younger. I was, I was the guy that would bring protein bars to like a concert or an event. Well, how long is it? <laughs> Four hours. Oh, I better have a bar so I can have my protein. I in between. totally believe that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So I did too. I did yeah. too. 100%. I, I mean, there was, a, we've talked about this. It's been a while since we talked about this, but I remember, I remember I, I truly believed, man, I get, you know, three days in a row of not hitting my muscle just falls off my body. Yeah. Cause it felt that way. I mean, I felt yeah. like I looked at it and go like, God damn dude, it just falls off of me. So that's funny. Imagine bringing all that food with you. You're like hiking. You're like, what's in your bag, bro? Is it a blender? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you doing, guy? <laughs> trying to hunt. What <laughs> the fuck? Yeah, you're scaring the animals. Yeah, I know his goal was to kill an animal, but that's yeah. obviously not the goal. You wouldn't choose to hunt. <laughs> yeah. That's why I said you're no, not going to starve. Know. You're choosing to do this for a reason, bro. <laughs> you go get steak at the grocery store. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you're... That's funny. Uh, yeah, that was that was me when I was younger. For sure. yeah, that's why it's good. It's good people hear us to, to talk about. And and you know what? If this was like a hardcore like bodybuilding podcast, they wouldn't answer that way. Well, how many grams of protein yet? Yeah. How much you weigh? Well, yeah. let's okay. see if we can. Well, here's what's convenient: yeah. powder yeah. would be yeah. good. Yeah. Then you can bring water. You can mix the powder. Yeah. <laughs> and then for carbs, they sell waxy maize, and then, which is another you, powder. You, think you, could, you could probably strap up your TRX strap on the yeah, tree, get yeah. some berries, and yeah. do one legged <laughs> squats with your way <laughs> in the morning. Make sure you have a split schedule. Yeah. Our next caller is Michelle from California. Hi, Michelle. How you doing? How can we help you? I recognize you, by the way. You've come to some of our events, haven't you? Yes. I've been at your guys' live events back in San Diego. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Cool. Well, well, welcome on the show. So how can we help you? Thank you. Um, so I am calling actually more in regards to my boyfriend. So uh, me and him are longtime listeners. We both came to the show in San Diego. That's right. That's right. Um, and you guys have been super impactful for our fitness journey. So we Thank you for that. Um, I'm a personal trainer. I'm also an NBC bikini competitor, and I've been competing for about three years, and he is considering competing for his first show, um, either in classic physique or physique. We're not too sure yet. Um, he's ran through a lot of your guys' program, but the programs, but the main thing is he's concerned of his muscle imbalance. So I sent a photo. I don't know if you guys can look at it or whatnot, but basically when he flexes his chest, one of his chest kind of pulls inwards, so it looks really unsymmetrical. Um, he's had this problem for for a while, and we've been trying to focus on just figuring out what's what's going on. If it's just like genetics, or if it's a mind muscle connection, or if there's something else, because it's his right side and he's right handed, he's right dominant for the most part. Um, so yeah, my main question is, is it possible that we can have imbalances on how our muscles look due to genetics or is it a mind muscle connection or a movement issue? I mean, yes, yes, and yes. I mean, it could be all those. Do you have, um, are you pulling it up, Doug? So I can see, have you done the zone one test with him? The zone one the test? Time. I mean, We've done it a while ago. We do a Prime and Prime Pro. I'd be really curious to see if he if there's a major discrepancy from his right to his left when he does the zone one. Like he can't like let like he can't get one side back to the wall. Like it, like d d a big difference. Like sometimes I mean most of us have like a little bit of a discrepancy where you know one side can get all the way to the wall and the other one can't quite. But I wonder if he's got a major discrepancy that way and he's rolled forward on one side more. Doug, yeah, he's definitely I, been having a lot of shoulder issues lately, um, especially, and and he thinks it may be related to the fact that we are really trying to to work on this imbalance. Um, but that was the conversation we had. We had the muscle imbalance for it feels like his whole life. Yeah, so you know the the, the right and left side of the body are relatively symmetrical for most people. So rarely will you see a huge you know, genetic issue where it looks really different on one side 
or the other. So although that can happen, uh, it's probably because he's been developing his chest a particular way for so long. It becomes so ingrained that it's almost impossible to to really notice with your exercise form and technique mm. unless you go entirely with like um, unilateral training. Like unilateral training tends to reveal these types of things. So map symmetry would be a good program, um, I'd say, for him to follow and see. The other thing too is he's competing in, uh, you know, physique presentation sports. Um, mm. And you can change how you pose and how you angle your body to offset stuff like this. This is. Oh yeah. No, 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 no. no, no, no. I'm looking at him right now. His right yeah. shoulder is rolled forward more. And so he's, he, this is okay. So this is a very similar and his chest looks like what my chest used to look like. So his left his well, we're looking at it reverse potentially. Right. So his left, his left pec is more full oh. and developed compared to his right. And if you look up towards the anterior delt, you can <clears throat> actually see, the separation better on his left side than his right side. And it's because his right side is slightly rolled forward. So I guarantee when he does all of his chest exercises on his right side, the shoulder takes over a tiny bit more than the chest does. This was a, this was a problem for me for most of my young, like lifting career. And I had to get to a place and start. He's got to get lighter. He's got to do zone one to prime and get him, get him started before he goes into his lift. And then he's got to keep a weight low enough that he can control his shoulders from from naturally rolling forward a little bit. And that's all it takes is it it, it comes forward just a tiny bit more and then it takes over. It literally looks exactly Has he ever had an injury on that side? Nothing specifically. I mean, okay. he's uh, he played baseball when he was younger and he's probably has some overuse uh, issues with his shoulder, but nothing like dramatic, but his chiropractor has asked him that. Um He's gone to people have asked him because it looks like it. I can but. see it. I mean, well, yeah. if it's because because it, if it's an insertion, it's hard to tell uh, with the photo. Um, you know, he could have tore something, but it, he would know if he tore yeah. something. Yeah, also, no. what side of it is is it his right side? It's his right side. Yeah. What, what position did he play in baseball, and how long? Um, he played baseball just up until high school, but he still plays travel softball now. He plays mostly outfield. Um, okay. And first baseball can produce um, asymmetrical physiques, especially if you're a pitcher. Um, I've trained some pitchers and, and I was pretty blown away by the the, the difference between right and left. Um, so it can produce that because it is, you, you know, you, you tend to use one side uh, in a particular way, much more than the other. Um, so it's probably an imbalance. Uh, map symmetry would be a great program for him to follow. And he has to use the I would have him start with the side that is underdeveloped yeah. and make sure that, and then use that side to dictate the reps for the other side and have you watch him and make sure his form is identical on both sides and really watch his shoulder, the retraction. Is it, is it hiking? Is it down? Is his elbow in the same position? Try to mirror each side and then that'll help over time balance things out. But this also takes time. Consider that. So it does take. If it. he does, if he does start to work on this, it could take like a year or two. Mm -hmm. so yeah, start to see balance. We've looked at map symmetry before, um, and I just I didn't. Nothing stuck out to me too much as it being very focused on the chest. Um, doesn't need to be. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It, it and it's it's that it's focused unilateral. That's and it. That's what he needs to do. Is he needs to focus on one side. Time. I'm going to tell you something right now. If he if he has an imbalance on his right pec. He probably has an imbalance in terms of function in his shoulder, sure. in 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 the sh muscles that support the shoulder, including the lats, contralateral, the rhomboid. Too, yeah, yeah, it's almost never an isolated one muscle because the whole body works together. So map symmetry would address this, you know, cosmetic issue, but it would also address any other compensations yeah. that have developed as a result, as potentially. Yeah. Right, work on the function. A lot of times, it'll help to that's right. build that connection for muscular development. And if that's the case, and it does look like, you know, he may be able to make progress there, muscular wise, uh, if you know he focuses on the connect connection there. But you know, I don't know specifically just based on that photo, you know, but it's worth putting effort in that direction. Justin, did we, in, in map symmetry, did we do the uh, alternating uh, isometric cable fly in there? Is I, that believe in so. yeah, okay. I believe so. I believe so. That's my yeah. favorite exercise for this. Okay. So yes. I, like, he, his chest looks just like what mine looked like. I had the same issue. And the, we have a, there's an exercise in there that I like lived and died by. And so <laughs> I just think it's so good for somebody who has an issue like this with getting connected, like the guys are saying, and it's a it's an alternating cable fly with an isometric hold at the end. 
So he's the, he's alternating, squeezing and holding that side, coming back, squeezing and holding, and alternating back and forth. Such a good exercise. But I I can't I just make sure he primes zone one uh, in maps prime before he goes into even symmetry and goes into lifting. And then I think symmetry is the program uh, mm -hmm. for him. And this does take time. It took me yeah. years actually to catch this up. Yeah, it could take a long time. Well, he'll be happy to hear that. You saying that it, that's what your chest used to look like. Oh, yeah. Looks, my chest looks just like that. Except, Literally just except like your that. nipples are and bigger. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah, much bigger yeah, just, nipples. I have a little bit pointy. bigger. <laughs> yeah. 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 Soft, <laughs> soft, though. Awesome. Well, thank that's you guys so much. Yeah. This will be super helpful for us. Right. Thanks. Thanks for calling right. in. Appreciate it. Yeah, you know, um, I'm, can, you know, it's it, it, that's it's a good point to make. You have a if you have a cosmetic imbalance, it takes a while. Yeah, it, it doesn't. It's not gonna like you. Oh, in a month I'll have this balanced out. Bro, I was insecure about my chest for it's a long hard time. Hardwired, you was know, because it, it looked just it looked just like on the right side. It looked like, and as a young kid, I thought, oh my, I, I thought it was decline. I need to do like it was like I was yeah, I, it was, I, I wasn't I wasn't developing the bottom of my chest. No, what it was was my shoulder would. I'd yeah, go you to, told the story. So I just times. I would slightly roll just forward just a slight bit like that from playing sports and I it just did not develop right. And so I had to get to a place. The body where, adapts. Yeah. The body mm -hmm. adapts. You know, it's funny that the, there's skeletons that they'll pull up remains from medieval uh, bowmen, uh, you know, long bowmen, right? In, in, during the medieval times. And they know that they were bowmen because of the bones, how the bones were developed, the yeah. twisted yeah, spine into it. and yeah. the one are, you know, the, the, the humerus on one side is much thicker than the other. And they know that all oh, these guys were pulling heavy bows, like your body adapts. And you know I, what? The uh, dumbbell work is really good for someone like this too, totally because it allows yeah, I him. I would stay away from barbell for a while. Yeah. For a long, for I would, yeah, I would, a long time. I would do map symmetry for a year at least, just yeah. to live in map symmetry. I would too, yeah. but then what I would even do because in map symmetry we have you at the end kind of test with the. That's barbell. only a few weeks. Yeah, you know? the most I, of it's all unilateral. Yeah, I would be, I would be dumbbell lifting for. That's what happened is I ended up going to dumbbells for a long time, and then really, you know, what also made it uh, made it worse was not only did I roll a little forward but this was back when i used to catch at 90 degrees too mm. so i wasn't even letting my yeah, sh shoulder no, yeah not full range of motion. so getting it going into the dumbbells would start to force <laughs> yeah. the retraction and getting me all the way into that that made a big difference on development but it looked my chest looked just like that and i can see it in his shoulders uh when he's posing like that so it's exactly how i looked next caller is austin from california Austin, what's happening man how can we help you how's it going guys appreciate Good. you having me on um, yeah, so I'm just a few hours south of you down here on the Central Coast. Um, I really appreciate you having me on. I started listening to your podcast about six months ago. Um, my coworker introduced me and we listen while we work. Um, stay up to date on most of your podcasts. I ended up getting the starter bundle. Um, I ran anabolic, really enjoyed watching my body transform through that. Um, and I'm looking forward to continuing to build strength and muscle. Um, and my main goals are just to build strength and maintain general health. Um, my question is in regard to cardiorespiratory training alongside a strength training program. Um, I know you encourage walking as the main form of cardio um, while strength training, um, and that totally makes sense to me. Um, but I kind of I'm a little concerned I'm neglecting an important aspect of health when I use walking as my main form of cardio. And I was wondering, what is the optimal way to program cardio with the goal of achieving heart health and longevity alongside a weightlifting routine while not compromising strength? Well, if, if it's heart health that you're after, um, you know, daily walking and strength training and a good diet is going to do that for you. Now, yeah. if you want endurance and you want stamina, well, that's when you need to incorporate different forms of, of cardiovascular training, things that'll challenge your body, right? Because Walking is only going to build a little bit of stamina and endurance. It's not going to build a ton, right? So this is when you would incorporate things like uh, hit cardio, sprinting, running, cycling, swimming. I mean, really, there's no wrong answer here. It's just pick one that you enjoy. And I would say if you're following a program like MAPS Anabolic, you could do a couple days a week where you incorporate, you know, 30 minutes to an hour of this type of activity. The shorter bouts being the more intense forms of cardio and the longer bouts being the more the less intense Forms of cardio, but could, so it's really about endurance and stamina at this point. You could all—I mean, I love to do twelve minutes of hit cardio after your weight training sessions, and then yeah. and then with your normal walking, and you're going to have you're going to build decent. I mean, that's only going to give you twelve minutes of stamina of cardio. If you want to go for an hour run or two hour runs, you're not going to be the best at that. But if you're if you're like general health, you want to have a strong heart, 
the ability for your heart rate to go all the way up like that, come back down, then go all the way back up, and you to do that in 12-minute intervals. Uh, you'll probably never have to in your life run from anything longer than 12 minutes that hard. I think you, I think you're gonna <laughs> yeah. be that's gonna keep you pretty healthy. You're eating well and you're strength training. Uh, you have pretty good balance. You just gotta know that is the more you go in the cardio direction, and you you begin to tip the scales in the that adaptation process, and that becomes which is fine. Which yeah. is yeah, there's nothing wrong with that if that's a goal. But if your main goal is I want to build muscle, I want to get stronger, I want to I want to get bigger. That direction, then doing too much of that, it, it's going to be difficult. So. Well, I think there's a misconception out there too that like weight lift, lifting and intense weight lifting doesn't like increase your heart rate substantially. You do get a lot of heart work uh, while lifting weights, especially if you're, you know, bringing and cranking the intensity a bit. Obviously, like walking for us is just something that's like just reco recovery type activity. And it's something that's like just in general will help your body to. Um, you for know, thrive in, for longevity's sake. Uh, so in, in terms of like uh, that, in, in like comparing that to other forms of cardiovascular, like Sal talking about stamina, that would be uh, if you want to pursue something that you have a little more stamina towards, this is where, you know, um, raising that for a bit longer and like cutting your, your rest periods, uh, which you could do with, with hit training or you could do with any other form of just like steady state kind of cardio. You know, that's something that you can pursue. But again, um, in terms of like covering the bases, if you're weight training and, and raising that intensity and then also doing, you know, walking, you're pretty much covering the, the basis Look, there. Austin, if you're interested in, in general fitness and in longevity and health, and you want to do this for a long time, if you cycle through our programs, you're going to hit a lot of this. For example, you yeah. do, you're doing MAPS Anabolic. Uh, you could try MAPS Cardio. Or, or MAPS Performance. Or MAPS Performance, right? It, or These are all, they're, they're going to give you different types of adaptations. Some are more strength, some are more endurance, like Cardio, OCR, for example. Those are much more stamina and endurance focused. But even Performance has a major endurance component there to is, it. There is. Mean, and there's, phase four is no joke. That's right. And, there, mm. and there's lots of different ways to do this. And, you know, Unless you have a specific type of stamina you're looking for, like you want to get good at running or good at swimming or good at cycling, you can even do conditioning sessions in the gym. So you could do it to where you you use the sled or where you, you take two or three exercises, you put them together. Like do a set of 30 reps of squats. You're going to build some yeah. stamina and endurance. So there's lots of different ways to do this. Um, that's why I said it really doesn't matter unless you have a specific stamina goal. Like you want to get specifically good at a particular mm -hmm. you know type of movement. I do feel it is good to consider moving fast. Like that's something people don't consider like as they <laughs> age, like you should incorporate on some level. So to be able to react properly and, and have joint stability while you're moving quickly is something that, you know, you should incorporate in your program. Yeah, that's gonna, why I like the 12 minute hit stuff after, yeah. I mean, you get 12 minute hit after your weight training session. You do and, it right. You're going to, that's going to, you're going to feel that. Yeah. I mean, you could, I mean, you, that means you'll be able to get out and run a, a mile easily and any, any basic, uh, sprinting from one point to the other in your life, like you're going to be fine. Obviously it's not gonna make you a great basketball player or football player or great at jumping rope for an hour or swimming in a pool for an hour. So you have to do those specifically, but if you just look for good cardiovascular health, the ability to get after it and ask, like Justin said, ask upon your muscles to move explosively, doing a little bit of 12 minute hit after weight training session will do that for you. Yeah. I'm going to send you maps cardio, uh, just so you have an endurance based workout program. If you want to try that. I also oh, think you should consider performance. Yeah, I also think you should consider doing map performance it, too. It's, it was performance okay. in the starter bundle. Did you already have that? I have the starter bundle, but it doesn't have no, performance. It doesn't okay. Have performance. Oh, okay, yeah. so yeah, yeah. But, yeah. I would actually if uh, before I go performance first. Yes, I'd go performance. Oh, awesome. I'd do performance next, then I would do cardio. Yeah. So that's what I would. We'll, do. Okay. we'll send you performance. Thank you so much. So is that something that you just cycle through, kind of like throughout the year? Is, yeah. Like just for yourself personally as well. Awesome. Yeah. We we designed the programs. We wrote as many programs as we did. And ideally, because um, our goal is always, look, we're always trying to talk to people about doing this forever. Okay. So ideally, what someone would do is follow one of our programs and then follow another one of our mm -hmm. programs and then right. follow another one. And I mean, literally, if you followed all of our programs back to back, you'd have like a year and a half or maybe two years of, of, of workouts all planned out. Now, most people don't do that because most people <clears throat> like a type of training more than others. So like, I don't go and cycle perfectly through all of our math programs. I tend to live mostly in a MAPS anabolic, 
you know, maybe MAPS aesthetic, maybe MAPS strong type of workout. Mm -hmm. And then I'll psych every once in a while, I'll jump out and do some other stuff. But that's just, I enjoy doing that kind of thing. But in my opinion, the perfect, in the perfect world for any of my clients would be to cycle through most all of them at least one time. And then you get to, you get to see what adaptations you get from each of them. Like if you've gone through it, let's pretend you had gone through all of them. You'd be like, oh man, damn, I know when I go through MAPS cardio, it gives me incredible cardio endurance. So let's say you, but you love strength training. And so you, you tend to lean towards MAPS strong, MAPS power lift, MAPS anabolic, and you kind of love to cycle around that. And you've been doing that for a year, two years. You're like, you know what? I've been really neglecting cardiovascular training. So then you insert yeah. MAPS cardio for a cycle. Like, so the idea is that we, we encourage people to go through the programs. They, they learn about the adaptation process that each of those, that way of training mm-hmm. and that way of programming gives their body. And then you learn yeah. to kind of mix and match yourself. And it doesn't mean you can't stay focused in one direction for a while, but that you, re- you recognize when you neglect something like right. m- mobility. Find out which one fills a hole or a need that uh, your body was, was really requiring from you. So yeah, it's, it's important to go through all that to assess like where you could spend more time. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. You got it, Austin. Cool. Thanks for calling in, man. All right. Have a good one. No problem. Yeah, I mean, um, it's important. It's ideal because if you don't – look, like here's here's the big issue. This is the obvious one. If you stay in the same kind of training all the time, what ends up happening is you end up amplifying the risks that that type of training – because every type of training has a risk profile. And if you only ever train in that particular way, Compounds. the risks start to grow. Yeah. And the benefits start to, so you start to get these diminishing returns and all of a sudden you're like, oh, my elbow hurts, my knee hurts, or I don't have lateral mobility or I don't have good thoracic, mo- whatever, right? Or I can't go for a run for eight minutes without killing, feeling like exactly. I'm going to die. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why it's important to do this, to go in and out. And you can live mostly in one type of training if you really enjoy it, because look, I'm not going to. The, the the bottom line is you also there's also the factor of enjoyment right yeah. so it's okay and to do that too like, but you want to doing this yeah but you want to take care of yourself enough so that you can do it yeah right because if you don't then at some point you won't be able to do that thing that you love so much our next caller is Stephanie from California Stephanie how's it going how can we help you good how are you guys good 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 I just wanted to thank you guys first of all um, found your podcast about eight months ago and it's just been a huge change to how I look at fitness and health and lifestyle so thanks guys for putting all, all that great content thank you sure okay so my question is um, I started lifting weights about 10 years ago really going to the gym with my husband Um, then I started with the trainer for about six months and I ended up doing kind of your typical bodybuilding splits, I guess, is what you guys would say, where it was Monday was chest and tries, Tuesdays back in, uh, thighs and then shoulders and legs. But the one thing that I was never consistent on was training legs. And that was because I was always training with like my husband or the trainer (laughs) and they didn't put so much emphasis on it, you know, guys, chest day, of course. Um, so just the last few years I've been trying to build my legs and kind of build up more, um, a little bit of back history on me. I'm five, four, one twenty. I would say, uh, kind of, I have a desk job, so I sit kind of most of the day or whatever, but I do work out and I try to stay consistent with it. Um, I run, hike, jog, walk, but my main goal is to build muscle and build my physique kind of build my legs up my lower body. Uh, I started anabolic about, I want to say, well, I'm not going to start phase three this week. Um, I started with pre phrase and then just kind of worked up. And I noticed that on all my lifts every week, I'm increasing weight, but my squats, I just am not lifting very heavy on. So I want to know kind of what you would suggest or recommend in order to continue to build strength and progress on increasing weight on the bar. Um, and then kind of what program would be ideal after anabolic? Should I rerun anabolic or should I move on to another MAPS program? Stephanie, how much are you running? Um, running maybe right now, one to two times a week. Okay. Okay, that's good. Are right, when you when you when you say your squats aren't going up, is this your back squat, your and your front squat? Yeah. Or is it just uh, your back, back squat? squat? I haven't uh, back squat. I'm only the bar with like 
like total 60 pounds, including the 45 pound bar. Okay. And are you noticing any, any, have you gotten any stronger in any other lower body exercises like lunges or deadlifts deadlifts or anything like that? Uh, Deadlifts. I have my deadlift right now. I'm at about 130 on. So I noticed that that one's increasing much quicker than the back squats. Okay. It could, be your, it could be your squat mechanics. Too. Yeah, it could be, be your it could be your squat. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Squat mechanics could be something with ankle mobility. Um, you could mm-hmm. switch to split stance exercises for a while and see how those okay. feel. Um, because uh oftentimes that'll that'll do the trick. Um after mm-hmm. maps anabolic, uh I I'd like to see you do map strong. I'd like to see you do oh. something like that. Uh that that'll really work the posture chain and get I was going to say so, symmetry, uh-huh. then strong. Symmetry would be another great one. The reason why I say I mean, symmetry- that's not, that's, not, that's not bad. Yeah, be, just because I think that the unilateral work, if it is something where she's it, she's maybe not getting as much glute work inside of her uh, inside of her squats, and it could be a mechanic thing and doing something like lunges and a lot of unilateral mm-hmm. stuff that mm-hmm. we have in there, I think might benefit her. So I would go symmetry first, then I like strong. Yeah, you sold me. I think yeah. that's that's perfectly fine. That yeah, yeah, I think okay. that would be great. And but then if finish you ever, anabolic though. Finish where you're at, and then the next one. Yeah, and then I'll, we'll have Doug send you over symmetry. And then if you ever, you know, if you, if you're ever following a pro, oh, a program you. of ours and you want to modify it, especially if you have a uh-huh. good feel of your body and yeah. you followed it before, you can definitely okay. do that. And what you want to do is you want to take volume away from other areas and add it to the areas you want it. So what you don't want to do is add exercises and add volume to your legs without uh, compensating by taking volume away from other areas. Otherwise, you're going to just do too much total volume. Okay. So if there's a part of your upper body, for example, that you're like, okay, my shoulders, for example, are really developed. I don't need to do a lot of work for them. You could take, you know, three sets from there and then add two or three sets to your lower body. If you want to mold and change the workout, uh, you know, to fit your goals a little bit better. Mm-hmm. So I, I, agree. Oh, awesome. I agree. That would look like aesthetic for me. That's why that would be the next one. So I'd go symmetry right now. After you do anabolic, okay. go to symmetry, then go to strong uh-huh. after that, which is a lot of posterior chain focus. That's I know that's why Sal went that direction with you. And then I would go to aesthetic maps, aesthetic, which is teaching you how to t- focus on a specific body part and develop that. And then you could pick. And we teach you inside the program how to do yeah. that. That's the order. Now, the other part, too, is going to be diet. Um, so just mm-hmm. from from looking at you here on the video, you look like you're really lean. Have you Are you in a, Are you tracking your calories and macros? Are you, are you eating more to try to fuel strength um, I, and muscle? I have been. So actually, since, I want to say since June, I've put on about 10 pounds. Um, so I was at like 109 or so pounds. And I'm 120 right now. So I am tracking my macros. I am probably around 1,600 calories right now. Oh, yeah. Um, you got to so get those I'm, higher. You're, how tall are you? I, okay. 5'4". Five, 5'4", five, four, 120. And you still look lean. I, you're, you're still probably in the teens from body uh-huh. fat percentage. So um, I, would, I would bump your calories up again, maybe up to okay. 18. I would go up to a couple hundred calories to really fuel what you're, what you're looking for. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard. It's really hard to build muscle and, and, and strength at 1,600 calories. Okay. Makes sense. And one last thing with symmetry, I work out from home. So I have a home gym in my garage. I have a squat rack, a cable machine, uh, dumbbells, a box squat. Um, is that possible to, yeah. you know, yeah, use symmetry at home? Yep. That's everything. All yeah, of you them. get it all covered. Yep, for that. You'd, you'd okay, be totally set. Great. All right. Awesome. Well, dude, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. No awesome. problem. Thanks for calling. Good luck. In. You're welcome. Thanks. I think, I think she needs to eat more. I think that's going to make a big difference. 600 calories with that much, you know, when she's actually Well, especially when she's running. trying to, yeah, feeling strong. Especially since she's trying to build. Yep. Yeah. And you're right. I forgot she's also running some too. She's mm-hmm. running. She's lifting. You know, she's she's obviously lean. You can see it in the video. Yeah. How long has she been doing anabolic? Because She's like, on phase three. Yeah, okay. Because at this point too, from going from splits forever to like total body, yeah. that should also make a big difference. But you know, to your guys' earlier point of like squat mechanics, like I don't know what the I know, depth I, looks like. I, that's I right. Know, like, I'd like to see it. Like, yeah, there's a lot there. You know what's uh, interesting? Be uncovered. I don't know if you guys have noticed this for yourselves, but for me, I can sometimes get stronger. Maybe not now, but earlier, earlier in my training career, I could get stronger in some lifts without necessarily upping my calories too much. But my squat responds a lot to calories. Like if I bump, well, so demanding, so it's I mean, just it so sense. demanding. It's so much muscle mass. Like if I bump or if I bring my calories up or down, I feel a lot of it in my squat. Yeah, no, I, I, I just noticed that with that particular. Yeah, lift. I so, agree. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. 
We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. And they're all totally free. They cost nothing. We give them all away. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can only find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. This one's really important. And that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets. At the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out and less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.